In this video, we're switching gears a little bit. We're moving from thinking about the producer, the firm, the seller of goods and services, or going back to our whole trade scenario, right? This was our producer, the exporter. We're now switching gears. We're now taking a look at the consumer, right? And this is something that you and I are typically more familiar with, something we can relate with a bit easier. This is the purchaser, or again, going back to trade, this would be the importer in our scenario, the person buying goods and services from somebody else. As we go through producer theory, we're going to be breaking this apart into two little bits. Our first little video here, we'll be taking a look at the basics of consumer theory, a lot of kind of the theory or philosophy behind it. As we move on, we'll go into the, our second video, which will be the nuts and bolts, the mechanics, how it's actually done the math, the algebraic manipulation, and then we'll finish off by taking all of this, wrapping it together, deriving an individual's personal demand curve, and then from all the individual's personal demand curves, we will develop a market demand curve. From there, into the following weeks, this uh, sets us up pretty well. We've already derived a supply curve. We're now working to get this demand curve. As we put the two together, we'll have our market all together, market supply, market demand, really our workforce model that we will be using to explain the world around us a bit. So without further ado, let's start taking a look at consumer theory. So to start off, let's suppose that you're, you're hungry, right? You're really hungry. You're walking around and you're just like, oh man, I need some food. And there, well, you come across a little pizza shop. So there we go. You have your pizza shop that you stumble across and you're like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to get some pizza. So you go and you order your first slice of pizza. Right? This, is, this is pizza by the slice. You're not buying a full pizza. It's pizza by the slice. You just get your first slice of pizza. And then what you want to kind of think about here is, okay, you eat this first slice of pizza. Keep in mind, you are starving. If we try to quantify this, if we try to think about it to say, okay, how much satisfaction did you get? From consuming that first slice of pizza, if we kind of think of this as a 1 to 10 scale, 1 being no satisfaction, well, 1 to 10, 1 being very little satisfaction, 10 being the most satisfaction you've ever had, well, this first slice of pizza that you've had, this is probably going to be pretty close to 10 out of 10 satisfaction, right? Keep in mind, you were starving. This could have been junk pizza, and you were probably still going to give it a 10 out of 10 satisfaction. But what happens if you then decide to go and order a second slice of pizza? Well, okay, keep in mind that edge of hunger has been cut now, right? You're not like, I am ravenous, I just need something to get in me. No, no, you're like, okay, well, maybe I could go for a second slice of pizza. And when you get that second slice of pizza, well, attached to it is also going to be some level of satisfaction that you receive from this. And... Hopefully, right, if you kind of think about this on that 1 to 10 scale, very likely you're going to receive a little bit less satisfaction. Maybe only 8 satisfaction for that guy, right? You're only going to get 8 out of 10 satisfaction. Again, it doesn't need to be a fraction. I have it as a fraction just so we can keep in mind that we're out of 10. But, right, we could just say, okay, we got 10 satisfaction from the first one. We got 8 satisfaction from the second slice. If we carried on, we could go take a look at our third slice. And right at this point here, maybe we're getting kind of full. Maybe this really isn't giving us a ton of satisfaction anymore. It's just kind of you're being a bit gluttonous, perhaps. So still giving you a bit of satisfaction, but it's down to five. Maybe you go on, you're really pushing it in. You're now getting a fourth slice, right? Maybe your stomach's starting to hurt a bit at this point. You're like, why? Why did I do this? Maybe this is one satisfaction. You're like, yeah, you know what? I didn't really get much satisfaction from that last slice of pizza. So what we see here is this kind of basic idea that if in some kind of fixed time frame, as we increase our quantity consumed, that is, as we eat more and more and more pizza, the level of satisfaction we get from each slice of pizza is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? I've got 10 satisfaction with the first one, but then I'm getting less and less and less satisfaction from the next and next and next. We call this our law, not low, law of diminishing marginal utility. 
And right, if we want to think about this, hey, first slice, we got 10 satisfaction. Well, that satisfaction, satisfaction, well, we could also think about this as, well, okay, measurement of satisfaction, measurement of, I don't know, maybe happiness, how much happiness you're getting from it. Or together, all together, we would think of this in terms of a term that we would coin, a term that we would call utility, right? How much utility, satisfaction, happiness you're getting from each slice of pizza. And our law of diminishing marginal utility is just saying, hey, the more and more of something we consume, the less and less extra satisfaction, extra utility we get from each additional item consumed. And we see that there. And I mean, hopefully that's pretty clear in the light in our world and our life around us. When we consume more and more and more of something, well, it's never as good as that first slice, right? That first slice was always the best satisfaction we could have. And then after that, it kind of peters down. So that is what we just measured here, what we were just coming up with, is technically, even though we didn't really calculate it in that way, this is technically, I'm gonna write MU, that is my marginal utility. That is how much extra utility I had for every extra slice, right? So you can imagine I started off with zero happiness. I had zero satisfaction, right? So to compare that, utility, satisfaction, happiness. I started off with zero satisfaction, zero happiness. I had my first slice of pizza. It was great. That first slice of pizza gave me 10 happiness. So what happened to my utility? My utility became 10. As I jumped to that second slice, well, I went plus one slice of pizza and I got plus eight extra utility, right? It gave me an extra eight satisfaction from it. So, okay, I got 10 satisfaction from the first slice, eight satisfaction from the second slice, giving me all together my total level of happiness being 18. I again go plus one slice. That plus one slice gave me another plus five satisfaction. That now bumps me up to 23 satisfaction. And then finally that fourth slice, plus one, right? Incremental change, marginal utility, extra satisfaction for an extra slice of pizza extra utility for an extra slice of pizza, plus one, plus one, giving me 24 as my total utility, my total satisfaction received if I were to consume all four slices of pizza. That is, and this is the big part, and this often gets confused as we move on, yes, we witness this diminishing marginal utility, that is every extra slice I consume gives me less and less extra happiness, but despite that fact, my total utility, my total happiness is going to be increasing. But it's just increasing at a decreasing rate, right? What do we have here? Plus eight, plus five, plus one, right? This is our marginal utility, what we just calculated here. And the marginal utility is decreasing. Right, and okay, really beating that in. It's a common misunderstanding as we move through. You're like, Keith, why am I not getting as much happiness as I eat more apples? Well, no, 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 that's not the case. It's just your marginal utility is shrinking, not your total utility, not your total utility. We could look at it in this kind of way, right? If we wanted to look at it graphically, maybe, maybe the table's not the best. Maybe you're like, yeah, okay, I'm not really seeing the numbers. Maybe you like the visual of the graph. Let's take a look at this visual of the graph. So what we can take a look at is our, let's take a look at our marginal utility versus our quantity. So again, marginal utility, that's how much extra happiness I got for an extra slice. We would typically expect our marginal utility to have a shape kind of like this, decreasing and then kind of leveling off. Right? Often we would assume that it's positive, but it doesn't have to. We can actually have a negative marginal utility. All that means is that by having that extra unit, you're now losing happiness. Right, And I'm sure all of you can think of a situation where you're consuming a given product. And yep, you had another one, satisfaction went up. Had another one, satisfaction went up. Had that final one, and that was one too many, and now your satisfaction is going down. 
right? Now that was negative extra satisfaction from that last item that you consumed. And now you are decreasing your happiness. You're decreasing your satisfaction because of that. In that case, right, this curve would dip below the axes and go into negative territory. But for our purposes in this course, we're going to presume that we're dealing with positive marginal utilities. How does this relate to? Well, that's our marginal utility, how much extra satisfaction I'm getting for an extra unit. This is, again, if you want to think about it, this was like our pizza. We had initially, let's just make this a bit thinner. We had initially from our first slice of pizza, right? There was slice one. That gave me 10 satisfaction. As I went on to slice two, well, come slice two, I was now only getting eight satisfaction. Right, so my marginal utility was falling. Very similarly, although my marginal utility has that shape, we would typically expect, oh, let's finish our axes first. I got excited and jumped ahead. Our utility versus quantity. We would expect our utility versus quantity to have a shape more like this. Starting at zero, rising up, and then leveling off. I kind of have it dipping down a bit at the end. That's kind of accidental artifact of freehanding. So we would have utility versus marginal utility. And right, if we think about it, this case here, what's happening? Very, very similar story, right? So we had our first slice of pizza. There we go. First slice that gave us, boom, a jump from zero to 10. Utility, happiness, satisfaction for that slice of pizza. We jump on to our second slice of pizza and our satisfaction jumps as well, right? We went from plus one, we got an extra eight for our second slice, that brought us up to 18, right? And what we see is as our quantity increases, well, the extra satisfaction I get from an extra slice is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Right? Imagine you have a box of cookies. Come your 20th cookie, eh, you're not getting much satisfaction from that last cookie anymore. So your extra satisfaction is really, really small, meaning that your utility, your total satisfaction, your total happiness isn't really rising as quick as it once was. So two graphs, two different ways to think about utility. If you haven't noticed, in economics, marginal things tend to be the focus. Most of our decision-making processes tend to happen in the margin. And thus, this marginal utility, this turns out, this turns out to be our focus, right? This turns out to be our interest. So let's carry on. Let's talk about this idea of utility a little bit more. Right? And we said, okay, utility, you can kind of think this as being synonymous with satisfaction or being synonymous with uh, this idea of happiness. And now here's the thing, right? This now becomes exceedingly difficult to actually measure, to actually quantify. But the thing is, is we know as individuals that we get a level of satisfaction, we get a level of happiness when we engage in different consumption. When we buy a shirt, we get a level of usefulness out of that shirt. It helps to keep us warm. There's satisfaction to go with that. Or maybe that shirt looks really good and we feel good about ourselves because of that. So there's some satisfaction attached to it. That's utility. And we know that, okay, if we were to really break it down and think about it, we could think for ourselves, hey, I'm getting something out of, right? Maybe it's out of a scale of 10. Maybe it's out of a scale of 100. Doesn't matter really what that scale is, but we're getting some level of satisfaction from this utility. 9 out of 10, 90 out of 100, maybe something completely different. Just the same if we kept buying t-shirts, well, okay, maybe we got a lot of satisfaction from that first shirt, eh, the next one not so much, right on and on and on and on. We would have this diminishing marginal utility the more and more shirts we bought. Eventually, we'd have a closet full of shirts, and we'd be like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I should have bought some pants, too. This isn't really a good idea. So 
that being said, let's say that we're talking about, let's change it from shirts to cookies. And let's say that we were to survey a bunch of people. And we have, okay, for your first cookie, right? Again, we can kind of say that you're hungry. And person one, they say, yeah, you know what? That was a pretty good cookie. I'm going to assign that as an 8 out of 10 satisfaction. Person two, they come and they have the same cookie. And they say, yeah, you know what? That was a pretty good cookie. I'm, I'm going to say that's a 6 out of 10 satisfaction. 6 out of 10 happiness. Well, okay. Do you kind of follow up things with this? If these two people were the entirety of society, could I then go and state, hey, 8 and 6, that's what? 14? Altogether in society, we have 14 satisfaction, 14 happiness being measured? No, no, actually, we can't do that at all. That turns out to make no sense. What about, can we say that, hey, person 1 is getting more happiness, more satisfaction from this cookie than person 2? Right? This guy here is happier than that guy. No, we can't really say that either, right? In this case here, this level of utility, this measurement of happiness or satisfaction, it's entirely individual. Maybe this person here, uh, maybe they haven't had a lot of great things in their life. So, hey, that 8 out of 10 satisfaction, this cookie is amazing. Maybe person two, they've had a lot of really, really good cookies. And they're like, yeah, that cookie was pretty good, but I've had a lot better. So I'm going to say that that's only a 6 out of 10, right? That 6 out of 10, they might have both received actually the same level of usefulness from that cookie, the same level of satisfaction from that cookie, but the way that they internally rated their satisfaction, internally rated their happiness, is different. So, okay, the big thing then is utility. We can think about this as an individual construct, as an individual measurement. It's internally consistent within the individual but yet it cannot be compared or contrasted between individuals. Because, hey, what's 8 out of 10 happiness for me might be only a 5 out of 10 happiness for you, but we can't really say that one's actually happier than the other as a result of that. Because, hey, what's 10 out of 10 happiness for each of us? Maybe you've had a lot more happiness in your life. So maybe for you, 10 out of 10 happiness is ridiculously high. Maybe eating a cookie is as happy as I get. In which case, yeah, there we go. 8 out of 10 happiness. I'm pretty good with cookies. Right? We can't really say. That becomes very difficult to do. So in this sense here, utility, great construct for measuring kind of individual preferences. They are individually consistent. Big, big thing. We cannot be comparing happiness, utility, satisfaction across individuals. In that, if you really wanted to get into it, we would say that utility is an ordinal level of measurement. And that is, right, we could say, okay, a utility of two is bigger than a utility of one, but that's about all we can say, right? We can very similarly say, okay, a utility of four is bigger than a utility of three. But now here's the big question, is the difference in utility as we jumped from 3 to 4 satisfaction, is that difference in utility the same as the difference in this utility? And the answer is not necessarily, right? The way that we rate this internally, all we're able to say is that, yeah, two happiness is more than one happiness, but that might not be the same jump in happiness as 3 to 4. We can say, okay, four is bigger than three, which is bigger than two, which is bigger than one, but we can't say how much bigger, right? We cannot say that. It's entirely just ordinal. All we get out of this measurement of utility is the order that, hey, four is bigger. How much bigger? Uh, we can't really say, right? So in that sense there, we cannot say that, hey, when I went and I got two happiness, that was twice as much happiness as one. Or, hey, four happiness, that's four times as much happiness as one. No, 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 we can't, we can't say that. Because this might not be one to two, might not be the same as two to three, might not be the same as three to four. 
The only thing we can get out of utility, the only thing we can get out of this happiness or satisfaction is four bigger than three, bigger than two, bigger than one. That is it. So that's a bit into the kind of philosophical or um, definitional side of utility of this measurement of happiness and what we're getting at with it. What we're going to be taking a look at next is kind of our basic assumptions of consumer behavior and how exactly this fits into what we've been looking at so far. So let's, uh, let's carry on and take a look at that. Okay, so taking this back then, we have this measurement of utility, satisfaction, happiness, and we say that, okay, when we consume things, consume goods, consume services, we get a level of satisfaction, a level of utility from that consumption. And then we went and we said, okay, with this utility, we have our law of diminishing marginal utility, such that, hey, as quantity goes up, the extra satisfaction I'm getting from an extra unit consumed falls. Keep in mind, although marginal utility is falling, as quantity goes up, my utility is actually rising, right? My total satisfaction, my total happiness is increasing just at a slower and slower rate, right? And again, I want to kind of think about this kind of quick, uh, quick and dirty little graph. We had utility rising and kind of leveling off. We had marginal utility falling off as such. So a little bit of compare and contrast happening there again. So we take all of this, this concept of utility, and we bring this to kind of explaining our consumer behavior. And consumer behavior, well, what we're gonna get at is kind of very similar to our fundamental assumption as to why firms exist, why firms are in business. Well, our fundamental consumption, or sorry, our fundamental assumption about consumers and how they act is we're gonna presume that consumers, well, their goal is to maximize their utility. That is, they want to be as happy as they can, and they are going to choose their consumption in such a way as to maximize their happiness, maximize their satisfaction, maximize their utility. And right, very similar to all of our economic agents that we've talked about, Hey, our firm, our producers, they maximize profit in the margin. Very similarly, our consumer will maximize utility and they will do so in the margin, right? And in that case there, what it is, is in those incremental changes. And we talked about this earlier on, very rarely, if ever, do you sit down and go, I am gonna eat an entire pizza. It's typically bite to bite slice to slice of, yeah, okay. I got some pretty good satisfaction from that slice of pizza, I'm gonna have another one. Okay, yep, still going good, I'm gonna have another one. And you're weighing that satisfaction that you're getting from each additional slice versus the cost of consuming that slice. And as a rational consumer, you are attempting to maximize that satisfaction. Here's the question, do we always do this? Do we always maximize our utility? Do we always go through this process? And well, I would argue that, well, the answer to that is no. But what I would argue is that we really are trying. We are looking at our life and we are trying to get the most satisfaction, most happiness that we can. And through trial and error, through just experience, we learn, okay, how much of one thing to consume, how much of another thing to consume, how much of this, how much of that. Oops, I made a mistake, I consumed too much. Oh, I should have bought another one of those. As we go through this whole life experience, we are learning how to maximize our utility. That is, you can imagine with this utility function, we are hill climbing. We're trying to get to the highest level of possible utility, highest level of satisfaction. So, okay, in any one kind of situation, no, we're typically probably not utility maximizing. We do make mistakes. But over our lifetime, yeah, yeah, we are trying. We are really trying to utility maximize and we are really going to say that this explains the way that consumers act quite well. Just in kind of the same way that the assumption that firms maximize profit, uh, that explains the way that firms act quite well. 
So our big fundamental assumption for consumers is that we will maximize our utility and we will do so in the margin. But hey, hey, wait, wait, let's take a look at this. If we're maximizing our utility, let's say that we have, oh, let's go back to, we have our quantity of cookies. And then I'm looking at my, it's gonna be my total utility from cookies, right? So, okay, total utility from cookies, total satisfaction from cookies. We said that, hey, utility will look something like this. And then kind of level off and become more or less flat. Well, hey, if I'm looking to maximize my utility, maximize my happiness from cookies, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I just do something like this? Right? At that point there, that's the highest level of utility I have on my graph. Isn't that maximizing my utility? Well, okay. Sure. If cookies were the only thing that we had in the world to consume, yeah, maybe maybe that would be the case. But Let's, let's go back and kind of think about our basic fundamental principle of economics. And that is our basic fundamental principle is that we live in a world of scarcity, right? And because we live in a world of scarcity, we need to make these choices. And these choices then necessitate an opportunity cost. And that is right now, all of a sudden, we don't just have this one product world. We don't just have cookies that we're wanting to consume. We have trade-offs to consider. So for example, let's suppose that we had only so much money available to us and we could either buy cookies or we could get milk, right? And cookies and milk grow great together. And you know, maybe you're lactose intolerant. Maybe this is, I don't know, lactose-free milk or something just to be inclusive for everybody. And in this case here, cookies and milk you can only buy so many of each. Let's say maybe that's maximum that you could get is four cookies versus maximum of four cups of milk. You're hungry, but if you only eat cookies, you get pretty dry mouth. So you also want to consider, oh, let's actually make that work a bit better. You also want to consider getting some milk as well. But again, if you had all milk, well, that maybe isn't so satisfying, isn't so filling. So well, you want some cookies, right? Keep in mind that, hey, if we threw in a price in this, if we kind of said, okay, cookies and milk were each $1 and you had a budget of $4, well, all we have here, this is our budget line. This is our budget line. We actually introduced this in the first week as this kind of idea to kind of show the trade-off between two different goods. And to say, hey, look, as I decrease my consumption of cookies, I get to increase my consumption of milk. And then what we can take into this is we can say, okay, hey, I have, I'm getting satisfaction, I'm getting happiness from consumption of cookies, I'm getting utility from cookies, I'm getting utility from milk, but keep in mind, I'm going to have this diminishing marginal utility from cookies, and I'm going to be having this diminishing marginal utility from milk, such that as my quantity of cookies goes up, my marginal utility goes down. As my quantity of milk goes up, my marginal utility goes down. Right? So in this way here, what I need to do is I want to kind of get this highest level of marginal utility for each one because, right, if we go back to think about our total utility, I shouldn't say highest level of marginal utility, that's sloppy. What that would be saying is just, hey, consume your first one and stop. That's where you get the biggest bump. No, 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 no. Right, but what we want to find is this balancing point because if we only consume cookies, well, we'd be getting like almost nothing here where we could be getting a big boost of utility from milk if we just had one cup. Right, that's more what I'm getting at with that. So what we have then is this trade-off to consider between cookies and milk. And really what we're going to be getting into in our next video is, well, where do we consume? 
right? What is optimal? What is my utility maximizing point? Is that going to be at three cookies and one glass of milk? Is that going to be at two and two? Or is that going to be at one cookie and three glasses of milk? Well, we'll see that a lot of this is going to depend on the preferences, on the level of satisfaction that our agent gets from our different goods, milk and cookies. But we'll work through kind of our way that we can approach this problem, the way that we can solve this, and the way that we can find then a utility maximizing point. So that's kind of our idea here. Let's, uh, let's kind of think about, let's just kind of finish off this initial introduction to consumer theory, this initial introduction to our concept of utility with kind of just some question to kind of think about, hey, are we on the right track with this? So well, let's keep up with our example we were just looking at. We were talking about cookies. So if you're eating cookies from your last cookie, right? So whatever one that was, you just received a marginal utility of five. Okay, if you just received this marginal utility of five from that last cookie you ate, what has happened to your total satisfaction? What has happened to your total utility? Are you more satisfied? Are you less satisfied? How are you doing with that? Well, hopefully, right, we can keep in mind, this is a marginal utility of five, that's plus five. So, okay, if we think about marginal utility as that change in utility or a change in quantity. So, hey, I had plus one cookies and I had a marginal utility of five. What does that mean for my total satisfaction, my total utility? It means I'm happier. I had an extra five worth of satisfaction, an extra five worth of utility. So, marginal utility of five. I am now happier, I am now more satisfied from that last cookie that I consumed. Okay, what about a different scenario? You're eating pizza, okay, and you're eating pizza, you're eating pizza, here's our pet little pepperoni bits on it. You're eating pizza and you go and you have another slice, so plus one slice of pizza. And right, you've been eating pizza for a while. And from this here, you're now like, okay, that slice of pizza, and now you're thinking about it, and maybe this is on a scale of, I don't know, 100? And you're like, oh, wow. From that last slice of pizza, if I were to rate my satisfaction, how much satisfaction I got from just that slice, I'm going to say that was minus 15. Right? That is, wow, my stomach now hurts. I feel grossly full. That was a mistake. I should have stopped the slice before, right? I am now hurting... This is now negative satisfaction that I received from that last slice. Okay, what's happened to my total satisfaction now because of that? Well, again, marginal utility is going to be that change in utility for a change in quantity. So in this case here, if my marginal utility was negative 15, that is I'm getting this negative satisfaction from the last slice. It was too much. I'm now hurting because of this. Well, my total utility is now falling, right? That is, I made a mistake. I'm now going to be sad, in pain, having dissatisfaction from this additional slice. So we can think about that in that case there. Okay, last kind of one to think about. In this case here, let's say that you're having a sandwich. Right, maybe it's like you're at a little conference, something like that, and you have these really little, tiny little sandwich quarters that are all cut up, and you're going and eating them, eating them, and eating them, and as you go from one, and you know, you're kind of keeping track, maybe because you're just a little econ nerd or something, and you're keeping track, and you're like, okay, from the one sandwich, right, okay, there we go, from the one sandwich, you were like, yeah, okay, my total utility was 10. I then go and I have another sandwich. Right, and now, right, so plus one sandwich. Now you're like, huh, my total utility now, my total satisfaction, my total utility is 12. <gasps> utility increased. Is this violating our law of diminishing marginal utility? No, 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 it's not. That is our question from this. 
what is my marginal utility from that last sandwich eaten? That is, what is that extra satisfaction that I received? What we're measuring here is not marginal utility. Up here, up here we were measuring marginal utility, right? I was saying, okay, I had another slice of pizza and my satisfaction changed by negative 15. This slice of pizza gave me negative 15 satisfaction. This cookie gave me plus five satisfaction. In this case, I'm saying, no, 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 first sandwich, I said my total satisfaction was 10. After my next sandwich, my total satisfaction was 12. So what's my marginal utility? Well, my marginal utility, the extra satisfaction I received from that extra sandwich was two, right? My utility, my satisfaction increased by two. So hopefully that helps us kind of think about this whole utility versus marginal utility. Total satisfaction versus marginal satisfaction would be another way to kind of think about it. Or total happiness versus marginal happiness. Right? All of those would be synonyms in this case. To finish off then, okay, what have we looked at? Well, we've looked at the difference between marginal and total utility. We've taken a look at the idea behind how we measure utility. That is kind of this ordinal unit of measurement being internally consistent, but not really able to be compared across individuals. And then finally, we've been able to discern, well, whether utility is increasing or decreasing based off of what's happening with our marginal utility. Finally, last bit there is, okay, by how much did utility change based off of some value of marginal utility? So four kind of things we've looked at through this video. Uh, what we're going to be taking a look at in the next video is actually figuring out where is that optimal consumption bundle, right? That optimal kind of ratio between how much milk do I have, how many cookies do I have? And then we'll play around with that a bunch and derive our personal demand curve. So we'll leave it here for that. And then we'll take a look at our demand in the next one.